Hello everybody, this is Mr. DSI Review. Today I'm going to be reviewing a 500 point game. This one is called Ancient Tribe. Ancient Tribe is a real time strategy game and it's a pretty simple concept. I'm actually going to start a new game right here. Um, yeah, it just explains that you are the god of an ancient tribe. So, you know, you kind of control all this stuff. And you're supposed to go and collect food and resources. When you start out, there's your little village there. There's a couple things you can check with that village. First off, there's your army. At the beginning, you can only have two units, and these are the most basic units right here. We don't have any resources, so we can't research anything. And it will be pointless to dismiss and then, you know, get some new units, because we can only get those. This is what we need to upgrade our village. We need a population of 50. 50. Currently it's 10. It says right up here. And um, we need 50 wood. It says it right here. And 50 rock. Also right here. And then it'll allow our max population to be upgradable. To um, have a higher cap. It'll allow us to have 3 um, military units. And it will still allow us to have only 1 god power. God powers are the next thing, and you can earn those by also pretty much researching them. I guess a sacrifice is made or something, but anyway, it takes a lot of resources, and you lose a bit of population. I don't know, maybe the workers just die off or something, because of how much work they put into it. But anyway, you start out with trap which can lure the, ne lure the nearest uh, beast and stun it for 6 seconds. I'll explain why that's useful soon, and this last little icon right here just asks you if you want to save. So let's go to this first area right here. Every time you upgrade your village, you earn one new area. And there's kind of a pattern to it, I'll explain later. This stone right here, it's a resource, of course. There's some wild boars here. I think that's what they are. And, um, let's see if we can find one more. Okay, there it is. Let's place this trap here. And if you use a trap and an enemy goes and, like, walks over to it, it'll be stunned and very happy for a few seconds. Well, then if you have a unit walk over to it, it can pretty much take the uh, beast and use it as a mount which will help him travel a lot faster I think they attack slightly their attack is slightly stronger and um, something else too let's see I think uh, I think they have a little more health but yeah they definitely go faster he's constantly outrunning the other guy there And there you go. You pretty much go around killing everything you can. For a real-time strategy game, there is almost no strategy to it. It is literally take your units from one side of the map to the other and kill everything in between. Then if you missed any resources, go get them. So right here, this is an example of like a kind of like a boss unit. Each um each stage will have one. Idiot. Um Another thing about this game is that your units have a tendency of continually running back to, you know, anything that might want to attack them, even if you don't want them to. Also, sometimes units can get very easily stuck, like behind rocks or, you know, in objects like this. If you tell them to walk far, it's almost guaranteed that they're going to somehow manage to get stuck on something. Like, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna go all the way over here. Let's see if it actually can make it over here. Oh wow, it did. Yeah, usually it will. And sometimes that gets really frustrating, especially once you got like five units, and if they all have mounts or something. Because then, you know, there's that one that you sort of lose track of. And uh, meanwhile, you notice on the top screen, there's a little timer here. Another thing I don't really like about the game is that there's a timer. The game is, like, very fast-paced, but it's, like, 
Too much so for a real-time strategy. Maybe the view on this screen just isn't large enough. Because later when you'll have, like, better units with, like, the best mounts, I mean, you know, the... They'll go from, like, this side of the screen to this side of the screen in, like, a second and a half. And you'll have to continually keep switching your view and stuff. You can have it centered on one unit, but I find that to be a bit annoying. Um, anyway... On the top screen, we've got the amount of hunters alive, the amount of food compared to the amount of population, and the amount of resources. I think that's overall. And then there's more troops info, what kind of troops you have and how many god powers you have left. But, um, the thing is, the top screen, I think, could be a lot better if it had some form of mini-map, so you could keep an eye on your troops, or... You know, I mean, even if it's one of those mini-maps that it starts out completely dark, but then, um, as you, like, walk by and explore, then it sort of fills in the mini-map, I think that would be best. And then you could see which places you've gotten, which you haven't, in case you, like, want to check if you missed an enemy or want to get every single resource. Because I can tell you that the game, the strategy in the game does not evolve at all, really. I beat the game, the entire game, by doing the same thing every time. And I was taking a bunch of units, strong units, and sending them from one side of the map to the other side of the map, and destroying everything in between. And you will also sometimes have to grind resources. Anyway, if you upgrade, you'll unlock a new map. It'll be in the desert. And, um, you'll notice that one star by it. That's all, like, the first... I don't know, tier of maps. In the first tier, there's always one boss enemy. And the pattern always goes forest, desert, volcano, I guess. And then ice, right over here in this area. And it goes up to four stars. And after your population reaches 5,000, then you just have to continue to support them for three days and they'll build a miracle and then the game ends it literally ends um like it'll go back to your last save point rather than letting you just keep playing or whatever like that really bothers me for a couple reasons first off um like most good games will let you keep playing even after you've beaten them like, just take, you know, Zelda or Mario or something. They'll almost always let you keep playing after you beat them. And then, also, like, just the fact that this game has, like, an ending kind of bothers me. But it also kind of makes me happy. Because this game is, like I said, the same thing over and over. And so, it's nice to know that there's a certain point that you have to do it to, and then you can just be done. So, uh, there you go, really. I, I personally didn't like it. It could have been a lot better. Um, it is glitchy. It is very repetitive. So the gameplay is not too great at all. Graphics and sounds are probably the high point of the game. Replay value, I really don't know why you'd want to replay the game. Because the game itself might as well be replaying. And, um... Yeah, there you go. I, I really don't recommend it. But anyway, if you want, you can check out my website for the full written review. Or you can check out my other videos here. Rate, comment, subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.